shout out to Trina and Evans. Thanks so much for subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for regular uploads and your chance to be including shout outs for future videos. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm very excited about today um, because you've probably seen me do a post on YouTube about chelating agents and how that I'm trying to create a actual bar, cleaning bar, as you know, I make dish and laundry bars and as great as they are, sometimes they can still leave soap scum behind, even with 3% citric acid. And I've been doing a lot, a lot, a lot of reading over this last few weeks. And it's actually quite difficult to find, but I've actually nailed it down um, why citric acid doesn't combat all types of soap scum. And there are actually different types of soap scum. Not all soap scum is identical or the same. It depends on the actual minerals that are in your water, the heavy metals. And citric acid's really good with um, calcium and magnesium, uh, if you've got a lot of that in your water. So it binds to that and washes it away. It does bind still with all other metals, but a lot less compared to um, calcium, magnesium. And of course, um, this chelating agent called um, sodium phytate or the um, it's called uh, the actual company's dermo feel are for registered PA3 so that's from heirloom body care and they just this is a new product in their range and I thought I'll give it a try you know got myself a hundred ml bottle and you only need max 0.5 percent you don't use more than that so this is what I'm going to be trying today in bar soap. So this is actually untested in cold process soap. I actually asked Kerry from Alien Body Care if she has any info about if this is compatible in bar soap and she doesn't. She recommended me just trying it anyway and which I was going to of course because it's sodium phytate. I mean that's the um the botanic like the actual scientific name for it and it's just salt so it's just like sodium lactate you know sodium gluconate which is another chelating agent here and i'll cover that in a second but from my reading of sodium phytate or dermophil as they say um it's really good at attaching to iron um, as well as of course you know magnesium calcium as well um and even lime scale which is here in my area in Sydney um, up until about a year and a half ago we really, really didn't have any hard water issues but I Keely from you know Soy and Shea she actually said um, they probably change your catchment where your water comes from and there's been so many apartments that have been built around my area and she was saying that the reason why is um, you know the water will run dry because of all these new apartments coming up so they would have changed your catchment and you're getting your water um, from a different place than you were before and it's obviously got a lot more other heavy metals in it i'm like oh yeah okay i didn't really think of it like that i didn't think it works that way um so i learned something new there from keely from soy and shade so thank you very much keely i just the only thing i realized is since they built all those apartments that's when i started having um soap scum issues especially with cleaning like with a dish of laundry bars i haven't really noticed that much in the shower at all um just that one percent citric acid but even three percent citric acid dish of laundry bars i noticed that on the uh, social metal surfaces as well and a little bit on the dishes as well there's there was just this residue that didn't rinse off so I actually just use my normal liquid soap and I added this to the liquid soap at 0.5% and I mixed it in well and I've been using that in the kitchen. It's my um, cocoa olive 80% coconut 20% olive oil liquid soap for cleaning and I found since adding this it has removed soap scum about 90% so it hasn't done it completely but it's a 90% improvement compared to what it was before. And what I've realized is the dishes haven't really been getting any residue on them, which is great. And I've been using it for about three weeks now, two to three weeks, and it's been fantastic. And um, there still is on the like, metal surface, like in the kitchen area, a little bit of scum. But the difference with adding this is I can just get a cloth and wipe it and it just comes off. So. 
I have noticed that this has made it less sticky. It's actually a lot easier for it to, to just to wipe off. So um, this has really made a massive difference in liquid soap. So this one here is also very good uh, from what I've uh, been reading. And actually these two, they say, are the closest thing to EDTA, which is what you see in, um, that's a, a synthetic chelating agent, which you see in a lot of commercial soaps. You'll see at the end of it, um, EDTA, it's actually very damaging to the environment and it's not eco-friendly. So that's why I'm going to the extreme mile to find alternatives like, you know, sodium phytate and of, of course, sodium gluconate. I had to get it from New Directions because that's the only um, place I could source it from. And I get a lot of my essential oils from um, uh, New Directions as well, as well as the other body care. Um, so fantastic place if you haven't gone, if you don't know New Directions, definitely just head to their website. Got a lot of fantastic stuff. But the reason why it took so long for me to get this is because, um, oh, it's a crystal. So you probably see it's just little crystals. Um, looks like salt actually. Well, it is salt, but because it is sodium, but um, like it looks like sea salt. <laughs> Um, yeah, but they were closed until the 9th of January, so I actually had to wait till they opened. So I had to wait for this one, but uh, this one arrived before the public holidays here over New Year's and Christmas. So I had a chance to test this over the break and really, really good on liquid soap. And sodium gluconate, I know, works well in liquid soap and in bar soap as well. Um, it's more so this to test in the bar soap, but I'm going to be using those two in the bar soap. So 0.5% for sodium phytate, which is five grams per one kilo of oil, which is really not a whole lot. Um, that's the max usage rate because then it can be irritating to the skin and you don't obviously don't want that. So we're going to stick with 0.5% of this. I'm doing half a kilo today. So 500 grams of 100% coconut oil. So 2.5 grams of that, and we're going to be doing 1% of sodium gluconate, which is 5 grams, because we're doing um, half a kilo. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually, I got these really cool ones that got airtight lids on them, stainless steel, which is really good because I can actually weigh out small quantities in this and um, scoop it out with my spatula, which is fantastic. So we're going to do 2.5 grams of the sodium phytate. So not a whole lot. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and put the sodium lactate in there as well and the grapefruit seed extract as well. So we'll do 2.5, 2.47. Two point five four. That's fine. No problem. So two point five four. Okay. What else? I've got my recipe here with all the percentages. <laughs> okay. So sodium phytate two point five. Yeah. GSC two point five again as well. Grapefruit seed extract two point five. So two point five grams of that. Went a little bit over. That's okay. Oh, I mean, a lot over four grams, <laughs> but it's okay. So the um, grapefruit seed extract can go up all the way up to five grams. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. That's not going to make or break the recipe. Um, sorry, five percent. You can go five percent up with um, grapefruit seed extract. You can even actually go up to twenty percent, and it doesn't irritate the skin or anything like that. All right, so that's the grapefruit seed extract. I'm gonna go ahead and get the sodium lactate. And that's 10 grams, because we're doing 2%. And 2% of 500 grams is 10. And I went up to 15. <laughs> I'm not weighing everything very accurate today, am I? Um, again, 15 grams, that's okay. I'm not too worried about that because they are going in this. So I'm not worried about cutting them or um, them crumbling on me. So that's, <laughs> that's totally fine. So we'll just mix that up and we'll put that aside until I'm ready to add that in that emulsion. 
Okay, so that's the way now. So the way we use sodium gluconate, from what I understood, um, the two ways, just like citric acid, you can add it at trace. Of course, you have to dilute and distill with water before you add it to trace. Or you can just go ahead and add it into the lime water with um, the citric acid. But I'm probably not going to do that. I am probably going to dissolve a little bit of it in water, only because I'm not certain if this reacts with citric acid. So I want the citric acid to react with the lye first to make sodium citrate. So that will happen in the lye pot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh out just to be on the safe side, 10 grams, I'm oh, sorry, five grams, because we're doing half a kilo. So I'll go ahead and um, get a spoon, take out five grams. All right, so five grams. 4.7. 5.4 there, that's all right. It's not going to make a huge difference, that half a gram. And then, oh, today is one of those days where everything is not being weighed properly. I'm always getting a little bit over. I have day, some days like that. And other days I'll like pour and it's like right on the mark, like right on the mark. But definitely today is not one of those days. So I'm just gonna do double and a half water. And of course I already use a steep water discount. So adding this water is really not gonna affect the problem, uh, is not gonna affect the, um, water content of the bars bar at all so 20 grams of water 21 grams well i was meant to do 20 grams so when <laughs> slightly over again but i'm not too worried because this is something i've wanted to test out for a while and i won't be using metal <laughs> because it's going to make that weird sound that everyone hates so I'm going to dissolve it, just make sure it's well incorporated and it's all dissolved. I'm going to add this add trace with the sodium phytate, the grapefruit seed extract and the sodium lactate. So that's all going to go after I reach emulsion or a light trace. I'm just going to throw it in, make sure it's all blended and um, yeah, I'm going to Give it a few days to cure after I make it. And then I'm going to um, test it. I'm going to really test it over the next two weeks, just in time for the, the video to be released at the end of the month with another test. Um, and I'm really going to test it like I have been doing with a liquid soap. And liquid soap's been fantastic. So if it was just liquid soap, you can theoretically just weigh out what you, you know, need, diluted liquid soap and obviously dissolve the amount of um, sodium gluconate and just add it that way. And that'll be totally fine. Um, so if you have liquid soap already made with citric acid and you wanted to try sodium gluconate, you can most definitely add this after the fact. So this is not gonna make or break, you know, the liquid soap, but for bar soap, of course, because it goes hard, um, you can't have this afterwards. So it's going to be a very, very good test. I'm just going to make sure it's all dissolved properly. So yeah, um, sodium phytate and also sodium gluconate are water soluble. Um, actually everything that I've been mixing now is water soluble. Grapefruit seed extract, sodium phytate, sodium gluconate, um, they're all water soluble. So, I'll just make sure it's fully mixed. And then I'm gonna go ahead and weigh out the coconut oil. Yeah, it's still a little bit, little bit of crystals on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish dissolving this and then I'm gonna start making the soap and then see you at the lava test.
right, so now the leather test, I did find um, adding these chelating agents, uh, all three of them, just really boosted the leather. You don't really need a whole lot on the sponge. It just puffs up really nice, as you can see. Um, it just makes everything sparkling clean. Uh, it's just incredible. So it really, really does work. It really does work. So you'll find, you'll still find that if you have hard water, you'll see sometimes scum, especially on metal surfaces like the sink. But as I said before, like it literally, you can just wipe it off. Even if it's a dry cloth, it just comes straight off. It's not sticky anymore. So it really, really does make a huge difference. So I would say that it's a 95% success <laughs> because it would be nice if we didn't have to wipe it away, you know, uh, every now and then. But the sink, I've just never had a sparkling clean sink like this before adding these chelating agents. So definitely give sodium gluconate, sodium phytate a try with citric acid. And um, it's definitely worth the investment because you'll end up with, you know, super clean, eco-friendly dish bars, and they really, really do go a long way. I've been using um, the dish bar for a few weeks now, and I'm just, yeah, that's it. Like, I'm hooked, that's it. Like, as much as I was hooked before, but now definitely, I am really, really happy that I took the time to research and see what ingredients I could add, and it really makes a difference. And I, I've just, I'm going to incorporate this in all my new recipes for cleaning. So you wouldn't add all this for body, but for cleaning, most definitely you, you add this um, because you want as much chelating action as possible um, when you're cleaning your dishes or your clothes, like if you're making liquid version, liquid soap. So thanks for watching everyone and I hope you will give this a try and let me know your thoughts if you do give it a try. You definitely won't be disappointed and you'll instantly realise the difference it makes. Alright, so until next time, happy soaping and uh, stay safe and bye for now.